Good morning everybody, Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today we're going to do a little unit preview for Amnelis, the new unit coming to Global this Wednesday, plus look at the brand new staff that she's coming out with, which you should farm. Like, before we even get there, go farm many copies of this staff, because it looks really, really good, plus we're getting some plus six gear upgrades this week, uh, quite a bit, and Amnelis is coming out about a month early for Global. We are not getting the Valentine's Day stuff this week, like uh, JP is getting. Instead, that's staying on its normal schedule. We're going to keep getting that in about four months like we usually do. And hopefully that means the Valentine Valentine's Day unit will go into our standard pool like the previous two units have done. Instead, Amulus is moved up by about a month from the predicted schedule. So some people are a little ticked that it's a month early. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal. I do think if you're a water player though, having back-to-back -back 100 cost units after not having any for so long does hurt your Vizior banks a little bit, but that's where we are. That's where she is. She is not limited, so she is somebody you could select or pull later. Let's take a look at her kit, which is really good. Now, I have to say, I was not anticipating having to make this video yet, so I had yet to do my, like, homework on what this unit brought until today, getting ready for this video, and she looks really impressive to me, especially as a PvP and maybe even as a PvE unit with the right vision card. If you have that, like, triple hit vision card that came out with Halloween Lucia, I think Amulus could be a really good PvE uh, chaining unit as well. Let's look at her. So, cost 100, not limited. Uh, Profit is her new job, so she's coming with her very own job. Her TMR is a summon gauge increase for self. Now look, I know this is like says for self. Look, the summon gauge just fills up for your whole team. So buffing your own summon gauge by 250 also buffs it for your whole team. This might not seem like a huge deal, but in a lot of like high score PvE situations, Trials of Reckoning, Guild Raids, getting the summon off at the right time is very, very important. I have used summon up mechanics from like Terra, who has a buff that does this before. It could be pretty powerful. It's also a TMR that has six defense and 12 spirit on it. So I don't think this TMR sucks. I don't also think it's, I think it's niche though. I think it has like very niche uses. It's not something I think you should just go out of your way to get unless you already have a plan on how you want to like take advantage of increasing some engage or something like that. Now, her master ability looks really short on paper, right? She's got her group buff with the HP and water attack up, and then 15 AoE resist. I know it's only one thing, like technically her whole master ability is just 15 AoE resist, but that's pretty good. Like, if you're only going to get one thing, 15 AoE resist does really help. Water's an element that has a really strong tank in Celis already, so have her kind of walk up there with Celis, absorb some of that AoE damage. I don't, I don't hate that. I would have liked to see maybe a little more DPS in there, but uh, we'll see what the rest of her kit kind of makes up for it. Also, we're not going to be getting her dream upgrade. Now, she already has this in JP. But eventually, whenever they decide to drop this, maybe it's like during the anniversary in a month with kind of our first batch of dream upgrades. Maybe it's later, just kind of further increasing the difference between global and JP's meta. Anyway, she's going to pick up 20 spirit penetration, which I love. That's a big deal for her. Activation time is always good on mages and unarmor is a skill upgrade she's going to get. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. If we're going to briefly look at her stats, I brought up some other water mages on the screen. You have Elsarel, who's kind of of like a bruiser water mage and then you have Aerith who's more of a support with some damage dealing capabilities let's just really briefly compare their stats I don't think this tells much of a story but I do think it is kind of fun to look at so here's all three of them Amnelis is on the left right here and I want to look at a few things one her HP is lower than Elsarel, who's again meant to be sort of an anti-physical bruiser but significantly higher than Aerith her magic at 620 is also the highest of any of these three, although not that much higher than Aerith, who's coming in at 617, but 40 more than Elsie is nice. She's also the fastest of these three units, 68 agility. She's a speedy girl, so I do like to see that. She comes with two defense and no spirit. Elsarel, again, 24 defense and two spirit. That girl's a bruiser. And then Aerith, as especially an anti-magic unit, comes with 20 spirit. So you can kind of see with Elsarel here and Aerith who they're meant to 
the fight. I think Amnelis is going to be good into just about anybody. She has a magic shield like Aerith does. Uh, she has the AoE resist to be good against um, a ton of big AoE physical attacks like your Ruin Stern Hazard Crusher, stuff like that. And then being a water unit, you can run her up there with Celis that can really help if you're fighting like mages or something. Celis could just eat those spells for you. So I think she has a nice spot on a water PvP team. Just at like first look. She's move three, jump one, just like they are. Her resists are very good. She's a little bit weak to pierce, and that's unfortunate. But 10 to slash, 5 to strike, 20 to missile, 15 to magic. She's particularly going to be effective against magic and missile damage. That's really cool to see. She um, looks really good from that end. That's kind of a, just a pr quick preview of her stats, right? Like, I definitely don't think that tells her story. I think her story comes out a lot more in her kit. So let's check that out. Her support abilities. Um, Illusion of Ginma. This is her main one. It's HP up, spirit penetration up. This is already a must run in my in my uh, estimation. And then she gets 200% chance for courage if her HP is above 70%. So if somebody does snipe her out and she's hanging up anywhere near full HP, she'll courage that. It's undispellable courage. I love that just being included in a support ability. She does not need to buff that on herself. She doesn't need to worry about it at all. She just gets that. It's Skahal has this. It's really tough to deal with. Uh, top tier support ability right there in Ginma Secret. Then you have some options. Scholar's Note, I think this is particularly important if you're trying to fight fire, because fire is going to be uh, evasion, and fire is going to be evasion for a really long time. We already have Pissarro out here running around doing all sorts of high-end things in this in global. Uh, Yuffie's coming out as his like best friend pretty soon. Fire Evade is here for a while, so being able to buff her accuracy a little bit is useful, and 12 defense makes her a little bit harder to kill. She also has missile and magic resist passive. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier, where it's really easy to get her missile and magic resist high if you run Vision of the Prophet. Then she has, you know, a height upgrade, a uh, upgrade for level three water, uh, and then skill activation time down. Skill activation time down could be useful in certain situations, but I think mostly you're going to run this first one right here, then either Scholar's Note or Vision of the Prophet counter moves. She has a very unique counter move that I think you're going to run in most situations. 30% chance to proc that will uh, has a 25% chance of putting the target to sleep and 25% chance of inflicting slow. So let's talk about RNG for a minute. There is first, there, there's a chance this will proc. Cool. Then after it procs, there's even, there's another chance that it does one of two things to the target, both of which are great things to do to a target, but there's going to be situations where this is like sort of super troll, where the counter procs, and you see your like counter attack with this, and then they both miss. Like that would be really unfortunate, you'd hate to see it. If you want to be a little bit safer, you can always run damage distribution. This is a great reaction ability, lower percent chance to proc, but you do absorb the damage you deal. That's been game-changing on units like Little Leela or something for a really long time, but I do think Time of Dull Sleep is really interesting, and especially with its long range, is something that we'll see a lot of people running. Okay, main job. New job, let's, let's check it out. Uh, her first move right here is Dispel Auto Revive. So she has Re-Raise Remove. It's a cheap move. She has four uses of it. Medium range, single target. That's really cool. Then we get to see two TP moves that both look great. So she can give a group buff to her allies that is HP recovery when you're at 50% or less. Awesome. This is a, she could walk up to like Celis and more or Celis and Astrius that you're playing her with, right? In a water team and say, here you both go. First time you drop below 50%, boom, you're going to get a heal. Really powerful PVP buff right there. Then she also has a magic damage shield. This is a 50% shield for three times for your allies. So not locked behind like a turn order. You don't have to worry about how long or short the map is right here. You just get 50% magic damage reductions three times unless someone on the enemy team can dispel that. This is better than Aerith's magic shield. Um, it's really a powerful thing if you're fighting against mages. I like this one a lot. Okay. Damage dealing moves. Two envelopes that gets upgraded to participation. This is a big one. So, 
look at this. It's very weird. It's very different than anything we've ever seen. Let's look at the EX upgrade because it's significant. First of all, with the EX upgrade, you can select up to three targets. So right, it's a damage move. It's a single target damage move that you can that you shoot three times and it can be at different targets. That's pretty awesome. Also with the EX upgrade, the range is now a long range move. One, two, three, four, five range is long range. It also then takes counterattacks off, eat that, you know, preemptive counterattackers of the world, then deals 220% damage. So it's a super hard hitting move, turns counterattacks off, and has a chance to hit multiple targets without being checked by AoE resistance, which is kind of everywhere. Yes, single target resist will still uh, check this, but I feel like there's probably more AoE resist, or that's a thing that people worry about against mages more. I don't know. This move feels super powerful to me. I think this is a move you'll see just out here like acing people in PvP. Then, let's talk about Bright Spines. This is a magic scaling piercing attack. Yep, that's right. It's a diamond AoE magic scaling piercing attack that reduces is single target resist by 25 and is a two hit move there is so much to unpack in this move this move's insane so first of all first of all double hit move uh that reduces single target resist instantly that's a good move for a uh, chaining in pve uh her main job i believe is now being included on the halloween lucia vision card so you can single target resist debuff with that or with that vision card i guess that's a little redundant but still this is a piercing type attack so you might see this in pvp as well you could see a little combo here where she walks into pvp this is like her first move is bright spines now that you've lowered single target resist she goes to participation to start killing people because it's you know all of a sudden doing more damage i really like that a lot then disarm which will later be upgraded to absorb the damage that it deals uh dispels buffs dispels haste dispels barriers and is 200 percent damage three uses at a uh, medium range so a lot of really interesting stuff in her kit right here um i was impressed i was looking at this on my lunch break at work today and i was like you know what this chick can do a lot of things now her profit uh, sub job. If you want to run this, you do have a CT Restore 300 that decreases activation 350. That's a big decrease, 350. I don't sleep on how powerful this could be on certain maps, but I still don't know that you run it all the time. And then she has cut. So she has access to a 40 AoE resistance debuff. Um, it hits in the same kind of AoE as like that vision card attack from the Astrologer vision card. I like this. She has access to both single target resist and AoE resist. There are a lot of chaining PvE moves that are AoE. Think about, um, just off the top of my head, Chunak's, right? Chunak has AoE moves that are, you know, multi-target hits. They will hit harder if minus 40 AoE resist is applied. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not the god of PvE chaining like some people in my guild are, but I do see a lot of potential here for her in that regard. Pretty nice. Okay, she has Scholar. Maybe you run Scholar if you want a little bit more defense and defense debuff resist. Um, or you, again, do have access to a activation CT restore right here that's basically the exact same move as the one in her main kit. Interesting. Um, never, never underestimate Law of Geo Absorption, though. The big AoE that heals that damage, although the AI will probably opt for other higher scaling things. Then she has Arithmetician. I think this is the one most people run all the time because it gives her access to those clutch heals. If you need that in like a turn two Guild Wars or she's out of range to do damage, she could instead opt to heal your team. Um, Arithmetician is a really powerful job. Okay, here you see that her heal that triggers, her group buff heal is a 40% HP heal. Um, and then her limit break is a diamond shaped AOE that has spirit res uh, debuff on it. So she can also debuff spirit by 25 that's a 200 percent modifier i think her kit looks really strong is she a must pull i think for a lot of water mains i would say yeah she's up there like she's gonna be somebody you want if you're not a water main i think like look guys the anniversary live stream just got announced today so it's really coming soon we know it's almost here so continue to stay strong if that's your plan now next up Let's look at, as my phone rings right next to my microphone, I'm sorry if you had to hear that buzzing sound, let's look at her staff that comes out with her, or anybody's staff, because holy cow, this thing is nuts. So first of all, if you are a black mage, uh, staff mage, Sakura, this chick, uh, if you're any of these mage classes right here, I believe this one is what, Skahal? Wait, who is this one? 
Sorceress. Okay, Fina. Anyway, if you're any of those jobs, you get 30% magic and 15 accuracy. Holy moly, that's good. And it has 15 magic attack up for everybody. That means this accuracy build is a viable option right here. 20 plus 15 accuracy. A 35 accuracy wand is really good and opens up some of your other slots, especially for a unit like um, Amnus, Amnus here, who does not have a guaranteed hit move, here's a way to add some accuracy. Alternatively, you can build the magic version of it, which now you've got all this magic on the stick, and you have all this magic buff right here. Really, really good stuff there. Next up, Bow of the Divine Flame. This is a plus six. This is getting plus six this week for global. This is a bow I honestly almost never ever use because previously it just had increased HP for three turns for self as the effect. Like, look, I want my bow to do more damage. So I didn't love like the 25% HP for three turns thing. Like and my bow units aren't out here trying to tank. I hope they're not getting hit. I hope they're staying at range. Didn't love that. So I do love that they're adding the missile attack 15 to that. Then the stats on the plus six, the uh, damage on the assault version goes up to 191, or you could build the 20 accuracy version, which isn't terrible. I still don't think this is a top tier bow, but maybe for like short maps where your archers are getting sniped out or something, it's an option. And if you don't have any other bows, farm this one. It's perfectly fine now. And then Diamond Mace. This is our Spirit Penetration Mace. It's getting its upgrade to now also include Magic Attack plus 10. The Magic version goes from 176 Magic to 194, so almost 24 Magic, or 20 more Magic getting added to it. Alternatively, the Accuracy version jumps up to 21 if you want to build that. And guys, that is it. That is what is coming out this week for Global. Uh, if you are pulling, I wish you luck on your pulls. Otherwise, farm the heck out of that mace and uh, join me on the live stream. I'll definitely be live Wednesday. I will probably be live later today. Wasn't able to stream on Monday because, well, my babysitters are still on vacation for one more day. They're coming home tonight, but that means I got to be a dad. So I'm going to go continue to be a dad. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.